Okay, so here is section 3.4 in the second derivative test. Um, okay. Now, the nice thing with the second derivative test, this gives us a sufficient uh, condition. Um, much like with the first derivative test, once once you checked on either side, you had a sufficient condition to know whether or not we had a relative max or a min. So here, it's kind of nice. Um, we just take care of it all at the critical number. So our second derivative test says if, um, if we have a function Uh, f with f prime of c equals 0 and uh, f double prime of x defined in an interval uh, containing c Okay, if we have that, uh, then 1, if f double prime of c is um, not equal, I want either greater than or less than, I just wanted to do it in the same order they did. Um, so if f double prime of c is greater than 0, then... Um, F has a relative, now uh, notice this is greater than zero, that means it's concave up. Uh, F has a relative minimum at the point C, F of C. And two, if, um, on the other hand, the second derivative is negative, well, then it's concave down. So then F has a relative uh, maximum at uh, C, F of C. Um, three, if the second derivative, uh, if um, f double prime of c equals zero, uh, the test is inconclusive. Um, okay, because anything could happen. Uh, we might have a point of inflection. We might have... Um, uh, a relative max or a relative min. It's hard to say, right? So, you know, examples would be, um, so suppose, for example, one, you know, going with our relative minimum, right? I have y equal x to the fourth, then uh, y prime equals 4x cubed and y prime of zero equals zero. So there's a critical number. Um, but, uh, oh wait, sorry, I didn't want x to the fourth. I jumped ahead of myself here. I wanted x squared. Okay, so x squared, so 2x, y prime of 0 is 0. Uh, but then if we take uh, y double prime, that's 2. And so y double prime, it's positive everywhere, but in particular, y double prime of 0 is equal to 2, which is greater than 0. And uh, so um, the point 0, 0 is a relative 
minimum. Similarly, if I just take the negative of things, I'll take negative x squared, then y prime is negative 2x, y prime of 0 equals 0, and y double prime is uh, negative 2, which is always negative, so in particular, y double prime of 0, which equals negative 2, is less than 0. And so 0, 0 is a relative max. And yeah, negative x squared, that's a parabola opening down. That would have a maximum there. So 3, now if I go to uh, say y equal uh, x cubed, then y prime equals 3x squared and y prime of 0 equals 0, so that's a critical number. And then y double prime of uh, uh, x is 6x, and so y double prime of 0 equals 0. Ah, so this is inconclusive. But I happen to know that x cubed um, you know, looks like this, and and so it's actually uh, at zero, actually, an inflection point. Okay, I happen to know that because I know what the graph looks like, but the test is inconclusive, and it should be because, you know, just turn around now. Here's my x to the fourth, uh, y prime equals four x cubed. Uh, again, y prime of 0 is 0, so that's a critical number. y double prime is 12x squared, so y double prime of 0 is equal to 0. It's inconclusive. Um, and again, in a, in a sense, it should be because um, it's not an inflection point. And, well, you know, I happen to know that y equal x to the fourth looks like that. And so it's a minimum, a relative minimum. But now, just our final example here, minus x to the fourth, right? That's going to look like that. So we know we're going to get a maximum, right? It's a maximum. But... Um, Again, our, our test is inconclusive, and the reason we call it inconclusive is that um, all three of these cases have y prime 0 and y double prime uh, 0. Okay, both of them, or all three of them, will have that as 0 at 0, um, but they all end up having different results in terms of what's there, what's at x equals 0. Uh, one had an inflection point, one had um, uh, a relative minimum, and this last one has a relative maximum. But so that's why these are all, in, you know, they're inconclusive and should be, because all three of these have those same two conditions of y prime, y double prime being zero, but we've got three different answers for what's going on there. Okay, so uh, it should be inconclusive, and that is this idea of the second derivative test. So beyond that, it's a matter of applying it and you know just trying to figure out what's going on from the algebra, and then checking it. Uh, with uh, some sort of graphing thing like Desmos.